The self-help industry helps itself to more than a billion dollars a year in this country. I'm okay, you're okay. Is anyone okay? It's just human nature to want to be interested in the new thing. Harvard Medical School psychiatrist Dr. John Sharp specializes in mood and anxiety disorders in adolescents and adults. Although the desire to improve ourselves is natural, he says, we should be acutely aware of why and how we want to change. I might not go to a place that could be very effective if I felt like I was so vulnerable that I somehow might be kind of swept away. It was awesome to see. One self-help trend sweeping the country is hiring a life coach. You're hiring somebody to help you clarify what your goals are and to build out a plan that will achieve those goals and then the coach coaches you on executing the plan. Melanie Robbins has worked as a life coach after a career in law. Among her clients are senior business executives, doctors, lawyers and fashion designers. Failing to plan is planning to fail. And if I had any piece of advice for anybody about time management, it would be don't run out and buy a Palm Pilot. Take an hour, take 15 minutes for crying out loud, stop the action, and develop a plan for what it is that you're actually doing. Time management was a big part of it. Senior financial consultant Chris Antares has a lot on her plate. She's planning a wedding, buying a house, and oh yeah, running a business, which she says has grown 30% thanks to Mel. We took a look at goals that were meaningful to me, and we started breaking out on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, the things I'd need to do to get there. What my role is as a coach is to get these folks who are naturally successful, passionate people back on track and inspired again. That's also the goal, literally, of sports that? psychologist Cindy Adams, who works with the Boston University hockey team. Think about that you really deserve to have a level of success from all this hard work. A former athlete herself, Cindy worked during the Olympics with figure skater Nancy Kerrigan. Her focus? Keeping the competitor's mind as sharp as her skates. As long as they are enjoying what they're doing, they'll be focused. Um, to eliminate distraction is to create a flow state. That's the golden word in sport. That trickles down to athletes at every level, every age. Trying to blend that transition from a naturally gifted athlete to now having to perform and train in perhaps different ways than they've ever had to train before can become a performance issue. You've got to be obviously physically in shape, but mentally you have to react to things that happen on the ice, you have to, you know, if you react the, the wrong way, it could hurt the team. Schaefer to one time, save me, rebound, score! It's all about communication. Holding secrets is the worst possible thing that can happen to a team, to a family, and to a business department. You have to have integrity. You also have to have passion, but ironically, not too much passion if you're talking about love. It's what romance coach Suzanne Blake calls the red stiletto syndrome. Those red stiletto heels are only going to get you so far. And that's those karmic, intense teaching relationships are so hard to break out of. But they're dramatic and they're intense. But the more practical, long-term sneakers, you know, that comfortable partnership where people know each other and they can relate openly, and there's not a whole lot of drama or tension or excitement, sounds a little boring, but that's going to last you 50 years. Suzanne typically works with couples at a transition point, deciding whether or not to marry or have children, and, of course, the broken heart. Oh, yes, quite a bit. But we can look at what happened in that bad relationship and learn there are patterns that people keep repeating over and over. So we can go back and look at what red flags they didn't pick up on, what signals they didn't pick up on. What Suzanne tries to teach each partner in a relationship is to profoundly think about their own emotional requirements. Some people like very deep and close intimate relationships. Others are much more independent. Because if you're playing up here and the other person's playing here, it's not going to be satisfying. You need someone who can meet you on that level. Finding the right coach requires some exploration, too, says Dr. Sharp. I'm concerned that life coaches may start to get into issues that are more in a person's inner life that they may not be well equipped to handle. Coaching is good for external goals, and therapy is good for internal goals. But what I find in this office 
is that people make mischief for themselves. They act against their own stated goals. They trip themselves up without always knowing why. Everything ultimately turns out to be internal in the end.